Hello and welcome back to the Iron Man World Challenge with me, Sheppy. So, I've gone and uh, picked up first aid as promised. That's kind of maxed out now and I've got loads of bandages. And uh, now we're just going to go around finishing off the quests that we've got basically. We've still got quite a lot to do in this zone. I'm not sure what it's like in terms of like quest count, but it's probably around like half done. Maybe just over half. Some of these quests that we're going to be doing here are pretty... They're kind of like filler content, really. Like simple quests, we've just gone and killed a single ghost and now we're killing a single guy. And uh, you know, very simple quests. I'll gladly take the XP, that's fine. But uh, nothing to be particularly excited about. <laughs> okay, so I think um, Zeth Gore and uh, the expedition a little destroyed town here. I think they were somehow linked in a story and we're probably missing some lore about that but I think we've we've um, l put one of the ghosts to rest, killed the guy who was uh, probably responsible for slaughtering them and now we're just kind of reporting back in. I don't really know. <laughs> I panicked there a little bit. Uh, I don't really know why we kind of helped out some Alliance ghosts. It doesn't seem to make a massive amount of sense from the whole board an alliance storyline but there we go that's that uh, now some more void walker quests wouldn't be an episode i don't think without me killing random void walkers and not understanding why but that's fine again it's xp i'm happy for xp just don't get too close to that edge So we're farming up some items from those and of course they drop like shit, as they always do. But this time we're collecting Void Walker Essence, which, you know, that sounds a little bit wrong, to be honest with you. I don't want to know how they're, how we're excreting that essence from them or are they carrying it around in a jar? I don't know. Either way, it's bad. They should keep it to themselves. <laughs> Maybe wash their underpants more often, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, whilst we're doing this quest, I don't know if you saw there, there was somebody else doing it. It's a boomkin. We're going to run into this boomkin quite a lot in the next few quests. Uh, it's kind of quite cool because um, that boomkin, I'm assuming, from the Iron Man uh, Challenge tracking website, isn't doing the Iron Man World Challenge. A good way to tell whether somebody is or not is whether they're in a guild. I can't remember whether I actually check or think. Yeah, they are. So they're not doing the Iron Man Wild Challenge. So basically, they're geared out to the hilt. They've got the luxury of using talents and glyphs and all that kind of gubbins. And for the most part, we're actually gonna we're gonna race them for the next couple of quests. And uh, yeah, it's kind of quite interesting, I guess. Keep an eye on that. See how the progress goes. So uh, the next quest, uh, we're gonna have to kill some. Uh, we're, sorry, we're going to have to collect some Ravager eggs. There's a little Ravager base over here. Uh, and now there's two ways to go about getting these Ravager eggs. We can either pick them up. So there's uh, one just there that we picked up. Uh, that's probably the simplest way to do it. But uh, if you've got a few people doing this quest, then you're not going to have a massive amount of those eggs lying around. Well, you can see quite a lot on the screen. There's three there. Uh, the other way to do it is actually by killing the Ravagers, and there's a chance for some of them to drop eggs. I'm not sure whether it's specific, like, certain types of Ravagers have a higher chance to drop eggs or not, or whether it's just a flat chance for all of these. But either way, the best way to go about doing it is to get the eggs primarily. Nothing too tricky. 8 out of 12. I think thankfully as well, one of the things Blizzard implemented off the back of the TBC launch, which a lot of people saw as a bit of a failing on Blizzard's part, because uh, primarily because there were too many people coming into the zone on launch day. There was only one way into the zone 
and everybody was doing essentially the same quests. I know a Horde and Alliance were on opposite ends of the zone, but for the most part, the quests are, are like identical. Uh, so one of the things they did was they increased the spawn rate for things that are being killed. So if you were, if you were killing things a lot quicker, they would spawn a lot quicker. Which seems like ridiculous common sense. Like, why would they not do that in the first place? But uh, I guess probably to prevent farming. Because I know in, in vanilla people used to farm like crazy. Um, in the western plague lands there were mobs that would uh, spawn quite quickly. And it's a great place to farm if you were powerful enough to do it. But anyway, these, uh, this uh, quest isn't particularly difficult. There's nothing I can really teach you here from an Iron Man WoW perspective. Uh, if you've got the basic uh, rotation down, or if you've got the, the abilities unlocked, so you've got your Hunter's Mark, you've got your Serpent Sting, you've got your Kill Command, um, then really there's not a lot else uh, that, can be, that you can be taught, really. I guess the Iron Man Challenge is more about like a successful person at the challenge will be able to deal with situations when they escalate. Oh, we've got the druid back look. Now, uh, just as a side note, we're going to quest down the either side of this ridge, killing these uh, these buzzards. And um, I actually apologise to him there because I think I stole a kill. And uh, let's see who can kill them quicker. Anyway, so yeah, I think uh, the Iron Man Wild Challenge is more about how you can deal with incidents when they escalate. So, for example, the, uh, the Warg Master was... I mean... You could probably argue I didn't deal with it brilliantly, but I didn't die, which I think is is kind of important. Um, and I was able to deal with the addition of of many mobs and uh, doing a bit of crowd control, control where possible and prioritising ranged mobs before anything else. So that's really that's the thing I think as a as somebody that's going to be approaching this challenge, that's the thing you need to get right off the bat is just to know how to deal with that. And thankfully you don't get too many instances of actually having to to think on your toes like that. It's alright every now and then just to make sure you're still awake but I wouldn't want it on every quest. Although maybe we're gonna get that on every quest if we get to Wrath. Who knows. <laughs> I have no idea what to expect if we hit level 70. But anyway, I think um, I think we won that little race. Boomkin's still down there. Uh, he probably got all of his... Um... No, he's still going. We uh, st actually struggled to get all of the bits we needed from those buzzards. Which was a bit of a pain. Still need three. They die relatively quickly, and look, they are spawning quickly as well, because there's two of us doing the quests, but one of the problems from the fact that we're both doing this, and every now and then um, I may have tagged a mob and then he killed it, or vice versa, is that's, that's affecting our um, killing blow ratio, which is one of the things that's tracked for the Iron Man challenge. Uh, it's not too bad on this character. As I've mentioned, I die so, uh, and I was legitimate when I died. But on my next character, it's a bit more of an issue, primarily because um, I'm in Tokar Forest at the moment, and my kill death ratio is a little bit out of whack, and I'm not really sure how that's happened. I think it just happens naturally when you're questing with uh, people in the same zone. Like I say, you can accidentally get uh, mobs tagged, and uh, it's about 30 or 40 out and that's that's worrying because there's nothing I can do about that once it goes out of whack I can't yeah I can't do anything about that without actually coordinating with somebody for them to get a tag and me to get the killing blow but we'll see how it goes I don't know what the the cutoff point is at some point the the, the tracking website will go nope you are an illegitimate WoW player and uh, nobody wants to be an illegitimate WoW player Okay, so we're back in the pools of Agamar. Uh, if you remember previously, we were looking for a journal from one of the little blobbies. And we've just used that on the altar, and uh, we've got a Dreno Vindicator times two. 
pop up and uh, he's, he's gone. We've killed whoever was uh, involved in that quest and we've got more Terra Fiends that we have to slay. This time we don't have to pick anything up off them, it's just a, a flat kill amount which is good. I much prefer quests like that. And we only need 10 which is also pretty good. Nothing too crazy. Right, so let's get the rest of those killed. We'll move on. Still quite a bit to do in this zone. I'd like to get this zone done and dusted. In terms of editing, <laughs> obviously I've done and dusted the zone. Be nice to get it all uploaded for you to watch though. And that's the last Terrafine slain. So now we're going to go and do this kind of little summoning uh, portal. Is it a portal? I don't know. We're going to do a kind, of, kind of like a summon quest that we have to do just outside uh, the raid instance in Hellfire Basin. Uh, it's not not too tricky. Basically, this is going to channel uh, for a minute or two, and it's going to summon some little imps, which die pretty much instantly. So that's really nice. Things that die instantly are my favourite. It takes a little while. I could imagine this is an absolute ball ache to do on a PvP server. Because we can't do anything about it whilst it's there. We can't, we can't, I'm assuming we can't just fly off and leave it. We can talk to it though, which is nice. And we're not getting XP for killing them as well, which is a bit of a pain. Hellfire Wardling, dead. And you know what it's done when it like jizzes all over the place like that, so that's done. Looks pretty cool. Nice little particle effect he's got going on. Uh, and don't forget to talk to it. I could have just stayed there all night waiting for it to finish, but no. Talk to the little thing and then you're done. Go back, hand those quests in and maybe we'll ding. I don't think we are. It'd be nice if we did though. I don't think we're going to. Not just yet, but we should do in this episode at least. 93% of the way through levelling, that's pretty good going. I'm quite happy with that. We'll be level 62 soon. Hopefully time to move on to the next zone soon as well. I'm getting a bit sick of orange if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> as I mentioned before. Blasted land plus Hellfire Basin equals a bit of a pain. Right, this quest here we've got somebody else doing. Um, so I'm going to edit this a little bit out because we have to wait for a respawn basically of a particular quest mob. And in the end actually I get a bit bored and just decide to fly off. We'll come back to that quest later. So instead we're going to do the stone scythe quests. These are these things are a bit of a pain actually. These hit really hard. Uh, the follow-up quest for these as well is, is pretty difficult but uh, to start out with we just killing some alphas and I think we've got some standard ones that we have to kill as well down in this little ravine. This in itself isn't that tricky. Which is nice. I think we do have one that used to be an elite in this cave. I don't think it's an elite anymore thankfully. I do remember doing this quest previously in TBC and actually needed to get a guildie to come and help me do it. It was that tricky. I died on it a couple of times. And uh, like I say, it's not an elite anymore. And uh, we can line of sight pull it out of the cave anyway, so that's nice. And he goes down like a sack of bricks as well, like pretty much everything else we've fought so far. Nice, Black Talon. Dead. So we just need a couple of these like standard ones here, the whelps. These aren't too bad. The alphas hit pretty hard. Um, and basically I think the difficult thing about this zone is... Uh, well, when we come back and do it, you'll see, but the worms don't help. I've mentioned previously the worms with their ranged attacks are actually a real pain in the ass. So I'm getting hit by two there. 33% health and uh, thankfully used a bandage. Just topped me right up again. No problems there. 
I also mentioned, like previously, how stupid it was of me not to pick up first aid earlier and actually use bandages throughout the game. But I think, in hindsight, I think that what it's done is it's made me realise that it's probably best that I didn't pick it up because otherwise I'd be using bandages all the time and there was a cooldown on reusing a bandage. So now, you know, I probably a more calm and considered approach to dealing with health management and going, okay, right, do I actually need to use a bandage? Yes. Uh, and then um, not really worrying about that cooldown. There are a couple of times that I've faced uh, some mobs where the cooldown has actually been a genuine problem. Not just yet, anyway. So we've uh, dinged. I don't even know. When did we ding to level 62? Anyway, we're level 62. That's great. Um, we've got this dude here who um, unfortunately marks us for PvP for five minutes. So I don't like being marked for PvP. Because some uh, bell end will come along and uh, kill me. I have no real control over that. Uh, the way to get rid of the uh, the PvP flag is to just take a flight path. It's the easiest way. I don't know when they introduced that change, but uh, it, it's there. So I, I've abused that quite a lot throughout this this little challenge. I don't want to have to wait around for five minutes. So, and I, ref I refuse to go out and quest with the PvP flag on, just because it's gonna—it's probably gonna mean certain death. Right, back at this quest, everything's respawned now. So unfortunately, that does mean we have to clear it all out. I was tempted to uh, just stay there and. Uh, if I'd stayed here and just cleaned the mobs out as they spawned, it would have been a little bit easier. But I wasn't sure what the respawn time was. Might have taken uh, five, ten minutes. And actually, has it happened? I think I stayed there six minutes thinking about it. I stayed six minutes waiting for it to respawn and it didn't. And at that point, that's too long. It's just a waste of time. Alright, Force Commander Gorax. He's going down. Okay, and then we get uh, the head of Kargath spawning as well. And he goes down like a sack of spuds as well. Nothing too tricky there. He's just waiting for the little dude to respawn. Okay, the next little quest. We've got a, a dude that's gone missing. There is an alliance equivalent of this quest. Like I say, most of the quests in this zone, they're exactly the same between Horde and Alliance. Um, with this one, we just have to find uh, Krun Spinebreaker, what was his name? And then uh, report back. That's not too tricky. And we've got some buzzards that we have to kill for feathers. You know, why we couldn't have had this quest when we were killing all of those buzzards earlier, I do not know. But there you go, that's Blizzard's quest design for you. But thankfully the buzzards in this zone are all like, they're very well packed together so we can usually get it done by going to one little zone or another. I think we have to go to the next one to get it done but uh, no big problems at all. We've got somebody else there doing the follow on quest from finding Krun. Uh, which will, I think, did we do that one? I can't remember. Probably. Some more vultures here. A lot of them just here, it's great. We don't really have to move too much to worry about killing them. We should get enough here to complete the quest. Two more. That last one is always elusive on quests like this, and we're done. Okay, so one of the um, the last little quest hubs that we've not been to in this zone is over on this little hill. There's a little druid encampment here, Sonarian post. 
Uh, and the quests that come off this are pretty good, actually. I quite like these. Uh, the first one is to attack these raging colossuses. Colossi. Now, again, these used to be elites. These used to hit like a fucking truck. They were horrible. And uh, going into doing this quest, I was adamant that I was getting ready to run, basically, if needed. This was definitely one of the quests that I thought I would not be able to do on this challenge. And how wrong I was, it's been nerfed into the ground. It's ridiculous. It's actually ridiculous that I'm able to do this quest solo. Um, even with the Fell Reaver. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they are hitting my cat pretty hard, but, you know, it's nothing I can't deal with. It's it's fine. Let's keep his health topped up, and uh, well, we should be good. But the, basically, these things are... are as you can probably tell, as you damage them, they kind of break into shards, and the shards attack you as well. But uh, if we just stay focused on attacking the main dude, don't worry too much about the shards unless we get aggro. Uh, the only reason we would get aggro is if we're healing our pets. Because uh, it's healing aggro, obviously. Yeah, so on one hand, a little bit upset. That I was able to do that quest, but on the other, it's 13,000 XP. I'm quite happy with that. There is a couple of follow on quests as well, which uh, one of them just invo involves fighting one of the shards here. Or a lured Colossus, which is fine. We know we can defeat those, that's not a problem at all. Okay, and I'm going to leave this episode there. We'll complete the final part of this little quest chain in the next episode. It's a little bit more challenging, thankfully. Right, join me then.